What's up guys? Today is my favorite day, auto show day. I'm here for the media event at the Atlanta International Auto Show and I'm pretty much gonna take you guys along for the ride the entire time. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> capability but again all the technology and luxury they expect in these kinds of vehicles so from a capability standpoint back in the, uh, January at the auto show we announced um, our best-in-class capability levels we're the first ones to a thousand pound-feet of torque with the new Cummins high output diesel first one to break the four-digit barrier our towing is also best in class at 35,100 pounds, and our payload is best in class at 7,680 pounds. In the past, that's kind of been the focus of heavy duty trucks is deliver all the capability. But we also wanted to make it easier for them to do whatever tasks they need to do, whatever they need to tow, make it safer and easier. So we added a lot of technology to the truck that wasn't there before to help them do that. So we do have the 12 inch radio in the heavy duty, which is a fantastic feature. It gives you a lot of information all on one screen. You can use the full screen for nav and have a 12 inch screen. You can split the screen in half and have nav on half and your radio controls or your comfort controls on the other half. So that technology flowed through. I mentioned the interiors earlier on the light duty that they were uh, one awards 10 best. When you look inside this truck, you'll basically see the same interior design elements and cues and materials flow through to the heavy duty as well. So we know we've got a first class interior um, basically borrowed from the light duty. And then we've also got something called trailer reverse guidance on the truck. That's enabled, but there's cameras on the mirrors here on both sides that give you this view down the side of the truck. So in trailer reverse guidance, when you push that button, what you'll see is a view that splits the screen with one left-hand side of your vehicle and right-hand side of your vehicle and trailer. And it basically takes your trailer and kind of crunches it into the middle. It's kind of a strange image to look at, but once you get used to it, you realize you can see both sides of your trailer as you're backing up. And that camera is also uh, movable, so you can adjust it to the right or the left. So if you're trying to back your trailer into a spot and you've got another vehicle or a building on one side, you can bias the camera to that side and have a great view of what you're parking your vehicle or trailer next to. We still have the cargo view camera on the uh, back of the cab. That lets you look into the bed. And if you're hooking up a fifth wheel or gooseneck, it lets you align the trailer to the ball or the fifth wheel hitch without even getting out of the truck. Another nice feature is we have a uh, remote uh, tailgate release. So if you were hooking up, uh, say your horse trailer or something and you it was back there, you're in the vehicle, you can drop the bed. There's also a button on the uh, overhead console inside. There's a bed lowering feature when you have the optional air suspension. It will lower the bed about two inches and you can back up under your trailer align it with the camera from the cargo view camera, get it right under, get your ball or hitch right underneath the attachment, hit the bed lowering feature again, it'll raise the truck back up, and it's basically now hooked up to the trailer, and you haven't gotten out of the vehicle or had anybody to, didn't need anybody to help you line it up. If you look at the front of the truck, you'll notice a lot of similarities to the light duty, that was intentional. The design front end is all new, but it keeps the family resemblance to the light duty truck. On the premium headlamps, they're directional headlamps, so when you take a turn, they will turn up to 15 degrees to the outboard to light your way into the turn. It also will automatically turn on your fog lamps if they're not already on and it lights up that path to your right or your left when you're turning. The truck I have behind me is a Laramie. This one is shown with the sport uh, addition on it. That gives you the body color bumpers in the front and the rear, the body color door handles and the body color grill surround. 
This is available on both the Laramie and the Bighorn model. The model lineup on heavy duty is very similar to what it was before. Of course, there's a 2,500 or three quarter ton truck, which is this truck here. And then there's a 3,500, which is the one ton truck, which comes in both single and dually. Similar to the gray truck you see over there, except that's a current 18 mile year truck there. So this is the Ram Heavy Duty. With the 3500 Ram Heavy Duty Cummins high output diesel makes over a thousand pound feet of torque. That's more torque than like 800 Honda Civics, give or take. Also, I know I'm a GM guy, but this Ram Rebel is awesome. With the Ram boxes and the dual tailgate, in red with the black trim, yes please, I'll have mine like that. We're getting ushered onto the next display, which is Mazda, but I had to come over and take a look at the Jeep Gladiator. We'll come back and take a look at this a little bit later, but it looks pretty cool in person. Is there anything better than a giant empty hall full of cars? Because when you get to come to media day, you get to walk around with all the cars at your disposal and no crowds to deal with. It's just like the best thing ever. We're here at the Mazda display to take a look at the new Mazda 3. And I'm a big fan of the Mazda 3. I actually had a first gen hatchback, five speed with a 2.3 liter engine, and it was a fantastic car. So I'm really interested to see what they have to say about the new one. This is a very exciting time at Mazda, and I'm especially excited to be here today as this is the Georgia debut of the all new Mazda 3. At a time when others are moving away from sedans, we have boldly improved the Mazda 3 to again raise the standard in the compact segment with a beautiful new design and superior driving dynamics. Delivering the best in both how the vehicle looks and how the vehicle feels. What you see here is the new era of Mazda design. This is the introduction of the next generation Kodo design philosophy or soul of motion, launching the brand into the next phase of our journey to premium. The artful design creates two distinct characters under the Mazda 3 nameplate. The sedan is sleek, graceful, and elegant, while the hatch is seductive, exciting, and powerful. What you see with both vehicles is a less is more approach, and Japanese aesthetics of reducing elements to achieve a pure, simple beauty. The Mazda 3 is a timeless beauty that is shaped precisely by human hands. In fact, each stamping die cast is finished by hand to be true to the original hand sculpting design. And perhaps the biggest news, the all new Mazda 3 is also offering what few do in this segment, all wheel drive. This is the first time we've made all wheel drive available in the Mazda 3 and combined with our unique G vectoring control plus, the Mazda 3 with iActive all wheel drive performs exactly as the driver intends. The all new Mazda 3 marks another significant step in our journey to premium. Our human centric approach propels us forward. Our signature Kodo design, groundbreaking engineering, and distinct craftsmanship raise standards across the board. Our dealers are evolving our physical environments to provide a premium customer experience. And our customers will experience our brand as they never have before. Everything we do at Mazda is meant to captivate our drivers and trigger their passions. Speaking of premium, our 2019 Mazda CX-5 in Dealers Now takes its next key step with a high quality interior befitting a new top tier signature trim level. The refinement of the powertrain lineup with the addition of the turbocharged Skyactiv 2.5 turbo engine and an enhanced focus on the chassis featuring the latest technologies with G Vectoring Control Plus. I don't know about you, but I think the new Mazda 3 looks fantastic. Like I said, I had a first gen, and this is making me seriously consider about picking up a fourth gen, if I can clear it with the misses. Personally, it's just my opinion, but I think Mazda is kind of leading design right now, to be honest with you. When you can make SUVs look this good, you're doing something right. I mean, the new three is gorgeous, but Mazda's entire lineup is pretty fantastic. There's really not an ugly one in the bunch.
range, 50 percent. Our standard route goes 150 miles, and that's more than enough for people who commute back and forth in and out of Atlanta. But this adds an extra element. It adds a little bit more, so now people who are a little bit farther out can see the savings. If you're driving in and out of Atlanta right now, and you're spending $300 a month on gas, you're looking at spending about $20 on electricity. This vehicle is going to change the way a lot of people drive. In addition, it has intelligent mobility. Intelligent mobility offers you driver assist technology that eases your drive. It takes away a lot of the stress. ProPilot Assist allows you to pace with traffic, and if the traffic in front of you stops, it will slow down and stop also. If that traffic accelerates, it will keep you at a set preset distance from that vehicle in front of you. In addition, it will track with the lines of the on the highway, even around curves, and keep you centered during that period. LEAF is already the best-selling electric vehicle in the automotive history, with over 400,000 sales worldwide and 130,000 in the United States. We have been selling this vehicle since 2011, and we have sold quite a few vehicles in Atlanta specifically. At one point, Atlanta was the largest LEAF market in America. And it's because this is a commuting market. In the morning, people get up, they drive into Atlanta to work, they drive back to their homes, and an electric vehicle is absolutely perfect for that. One electric vehicle replacing one gas-powered vehicle saves six to nine tons of CO2 from going into the atmosphere on an annual basis. Take a look at it. A drag coefficient of 0.28, better actually than the GTR, which is one of the fastest cars on there. Roomy, it's a five-passenger vehicle, and it has all the equipment that you would anticipate on any luxury vehicle. Leather appointments, leather wrap steering wheel, heated seats, heated steering wheel. And it has cargo capacity, 23 and a half feet of cargo capacity in the back. So this is a practical car that you can use every day. If you haven't had an opportunity to drive, then take a moment and do so. We're looking at all the numbers, and we're hearing people say that within the next five to seven years, battery prices are declining rapidly. Within the next five to seven years, more than half the passenger cars on being sold in America will be electric. And I think you'll find that virtually every man after a year has announced that they will be undertaking electric vehicles. Leaf leads the way. This is a practical car that you can use on a daily basis. Speaking of fastest growing segments, I want to talk to you about the Chevrolet Blazer, which fits in squarely in the crossover market. Um, this is our SUV with attitude. Uh, the design is inspired by the Chevrolet Camaro, so it breathes performance right when you look at it. From its wider stance, uh, dramatic sculpting and body lines, um, to uh, three distinct personalities. Uh, there are three personalities from a design standpoint for Blazer. The first of them is Blazer. Laser, which is our flagship design. We also have Premier, which you can see over there in the dark gray blue color. Uh, that is noted by premium appointments and inspired by luxury design elements. And what you're looking at right here in the red hot is our Blazer RS. RS stands for Rally Sport, and design features from the RS are inspired by automotive aftermarket and performance features. Some of the things you'll notice uh, that are inspired by these two elements are the black chrome mesh grille, the black bow tie, and black chrome wheels. You'll also note that the design elements for each of these personalities are also visible inside the vehicle. So I do invite you, either after the presentation or if you, if you want to come up now, to take a look at, on how these design elements insert themselves into the interior of the vehicle. I really do invite you to do that. Uh, this means red stitching on the seats and IP address, 
um, red performance uh, lining on all of the air vents. Um, it, it really is a wonderful and cohesive design aesthetic. We also know that crossover customers are very interested in technology. So every Blazer comes equipped with an eight inch diameter touchscreen interface uh, that is compatible with Chevy's Infotainment 3 technology system. It's also equipped with six USB ports. And what that means is you can connect your smartphone device to the car and use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for seamless and safe mobile integration. Beyond technology features, we also know that safety is paramount for crossover drivers. So all, Blazer co or all Blazers come equipped with things like team driver, rear seat reminder, and active safety features like forward low speed collision alert rear low speed collision alert, lane keep assist, lane departure warning. These all serve as extra tools to keep you safe, comfortable, and confident behind the wheel. Now we know that the design is inspired by performance, but the vehicle itself, the Blazer, is inherently an SUV. So we've made this comfortable with plenty of storage solutions. Uh, from the expanded size of the uh, storage solutions in the IP address to expanded cargo space and reclining rear seats, uh, this is designed with uh, road trips in mind or driving day to day uh, to work. I'd be more than happy to give anybody who would like to stick around an in depth walk around of the interior of the vehicle because there are many customer focused appointments that make this a comfortable vehicle uh, for something like a road trip. Um, I would like to introduce you to the latest iteration of, or addition to, the Silverado franchise. This is the 2020 Silverado HD. Um, this is the most powerful and capable Silverado ever produced by Chevrolet. Uh, the one you're looking at here is, a power, is powered by the 6.6 liter Duramax diesel engine. And it's got, the, uh, got max towing of 35,500 pounds. Now that might sound like a lot, and that's because it is. <laughs> it's the highest towing capacity of any vehicle that Chevrolet has ever produced, but it's also segment leading for HD vehicles. But we know that towing capacity is only one part of the equation. Towing confidence is of equal importance. And so we designed this vehicle with towing confidence in mind as well. Everybody who uh, gets behind the wheel of a Silverado HD also has access to our Chevrolet towing app, which enables them to get diagnostic run diagnostic reports on the vehicle and the trailer that it's towing, develop different profiles for different trailers. So when you're towing a boat, it's not the same thing as towing a cargo trailer, and we account for that through the Chevrolet uh, towing app. And we also have integrated technology in another smart way, which is to say with a variety of different cameras. So we have an advanced trailering package that equips drivers with more than 15 cameras that allow for viewing above the vehicle, down below, on either side of the vehicle and trailer, and equipping the trailer itself with its own camera so that it's like the trailer isn't even there. So like I said, towing performance is important and towing confidence is equally important. There are also a number of features on the back of the vehicle, and I apologize, I'll just ask you to walk around to the back, that I wanna make sure I point out for you. Uh, we have 11, 11 segment firsts with the Silverado HD, and one of them is these uh, bed step, uh, these bed steps on the side. Now these are inspired by our corner step bumpers, which have actually been enhanced in size for the Silverado HD in 2020. They now fit a men's size 12 steel toe boot, and there's plenty of room for you to get your foot in there, swing your other foot around, and get into this bed. I would show you, but unfortunately, I am not dressed for the occasion. <laughs> Um, the bed step bumper follows the same inspiration, but because this, the cargo box is bigger than any other cargo box we've ever created, we wanted to make sure that access to the front of the bed was easy, simple, and safe. So we created bed steps in order to help you do that. We also wanted to make sure the bed was bigger, but also more functional. It's a fully lit Chevrolet bed. I'd be happy to point out the lights inside of the bed for you. And it's got segment leading number of tie downs. So it's very functional to haul things like bags of cement, cement bricks, right? Something that might fall around uh, inside of the bed. Um, this allows you to tie them down safely, securely, in a, in a number of different combinations so that you can use the bed for your own purposes. One last thing I'll point out, uh, this is the uh, only electronic up-down tailgate in the industry. 
Unfortunately, the vehicle is locked. I can't show you today, but we do have uh, that feature highlighted for you in video content on media.chevrolet.com, and I'd be more than happy to point you to that at the end of this presentation. Guys, I gotta be completely honest with you. The new Chevy Blazer looks fantastic. I don't know what you think of it, but personally, I think it looks fantastic. A high-riding Camaro does not sound like a bad thing to me, and that I could take the girls to their practices or go on family trips in it even better. Definitely am interested in this car. What I like about the Blazer is that it doesn't look like every other freaking SUV on the market. It's its own thing, it blazes its own path, and it looks okay. unique. So you're driving around in one of these, it doesn't look like you've completely given up on life. Even if you have, even if you've given up, and you have like nine kids and six cats and four dogs, a bunny, maybe a ferret, but it's okay because you have a Blazer. Inside of the Blazer, is sick. It looks just like a Camaro in here. I'm gonna come by later and get some more shots of it, but I promise you, you will not be disappointed with this car. You know how I feel about Corvettes, so I couldn't come over to the Chevy stand without standing by the ZR1. This car is nuts, absolutely insane. I don't even know if I deserve to have that kind of weapons grade horsepower. It's like having a nuclear bomb under the hood and then the tires to actually make it stick. Totally insane car, bonkers, nuts, and I deeply want one. What's up guys, we're here with the new Ford Explorer, which, you know, I know I always give Ford a hard time because I'm a GM guy, but let's be honest, Ford's doing a good job. The new Expedition is awesome, and this new Explorer looks great. So we're gonna hear about that coming up in a second. And here today we have the 2020 Mustang Shelby GT500, and that's the red and white display vehicle that you see up front there. And I know that that's probably the real reason that many of you are here today. And I'm not going to take it personally because we definitely love this car. This is the most powerful street legal Ford ever made with a supercharged 5.2 liter V8 engine. And I think that that's worth repeating. This is the most powerful Ford ever made. Supercharged 5.2 liter V8 engine. It's capable of going 0 to 60 in mid 3 seconds and it's also tracking quarter mile scores of mid self 11 seconds. So very, very powerful. It features the, ba the best Mustang track times, the best cornering, and the largest brakes of any domestic sports coupe. And this is thanks to technology transferred from the Mustang GT and the Ford GT4 racing program. So we took that technology and we put it into the GT500 to make it the most performance powerful Ford that we have created. And then next we're gonna talk about our SUV lineup because we did take some of that performance spirit and put it into our SUVs. And SUVs are extremely important right now as the consumers continue to shift from the traditional passenger sedans over into larger utility vehicles. The new 2019 Ford Edge launched last year, and it's one of our smartest vehicles yet. And this is in thanks part to the Copilot 360 technology that you're finding on all of our newer vehicles. And it includes technology such as Bliss, which is our blind spot information system, Active Park Assist, which is great if you're like me and have trouble parallel parking. It has a lane keeping system and adaptive cruise control. And in our lineup of SUVs, the Explorer is a very enduring nameplate here in America. And since its original launch back in 1990, and despite all of the increased competition in this segment, Explorer remains the best selling three row SUV in America. And I think that that says a lot about how much America Love the Explorer. And today I'm very proud to show you the new 2020 Ford Explorer that's going to go on sale later this year. And it has an available 3 liter EcoBoost engine that makes it the most powerful Explorer that we've ever made. The 2020 Explorer is also going to be available in a hybrid powertrain and it will average 500 miles between fill-ups and it'll also be able to tow 5,000 pounds. So that's definitely one powerful hybrid. We're also going to have the Explorer ST, which is right here, and that is um, 400 horsepower, and it is the first Explorer ever that has been produced by our Ford Performance team. And so with the hybrid, the ST package, and the beautifully redesigned 
Design 2020 Explorer, I'm definitely confident that the Explorer is going to remain the best-selling three-row SUV here in America. So they mentioned the GT500 in the press briefing, but they didn't tell horsepower figures because I believe as of the filming of this video, they have not released specific horsepower numbers on this car, but they confirmed that it will be the most powerful Ford ever. So more powerful than the Ford GT. I'm thinking 750 because that's like the ZR1. Pure speculation, maybe 751. So the new Ford Explorer is based on a new rear wheel drive platform, the same one that's gonna be under the Lincoln Aviator, which is not bad bones to share, and I think it looks pretty good. Now, if I had to pick, I don't know, the Blazer looks better, but this is a much larger and more practical vehicle, so it'd probably depend on your needs. I'm not sure I really love the new Ford Ranger. In a really competitive segment, I'm just not sure it's offering anything really new. Uh, the interior's kind of dated looking when compared to some of its rivals. I'm sure it's affordable and it'll probably serve you well, but is it as good as the Chevy Colorado or the Toyota Tacoma, which is itself very old? I don't know. It probably depends on your brand loyalty. On the flip side, who doesn't want a Raptor? I mean, honestly, I want the truck just because it's called a Raptor. And personally, I would say, and I say this as a GM guy, Ford's Super Duty trucks, the big boys, are the coolest style. Now the Rams might be better, I don't know, because I'm not a truck driver, but the Fords, I think, look the best. The front end, awesome, tough, imposing, maybe killed a few people, hard to say. I'm not pointing any fingers. One car I'm a big fan of is the new Expedition. I have a Suburban, it's an older one, 2012 model, but this is a pretty awesome car right here. I would have to drive this in a Suburban back to back if I was gonna replace mine to see which one was better, but personally, I'm kinda leaning towards this right now. All right, I know when it comes to car shows, this is the moment that a lot of people have been waiting for. The Toyota Supra. Now, I already made a video about this and it was a little polarizing to say the least. People are right, people are wrong. Personally, I don't think there is a right answer when it comes to the Supra. The Supra is what the Supra is. You either like it or you don't like it. Personally, I think the styling is okay. I'm not against it, but I don't love it. I think it really just depends on your personal preference. We'll hear what they have to say about the Supra in a second. But without much further ado, I know you're all here to see more and hear more about the 2020 GR Supra. And for that, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Matt Barber, to tell you a little bit more. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the show. Everybody seen a lot of great cars out there. Welcome to the Toyota Live Stage. Now, I want you to take a little trip with me. In July of 2018, in front of tens of thousands of fans, at England's Goodwood Festival of Speed, a low, long-hooded sports car wearing full camouflage and a mysterious A90 marking came up the narrow, curvy hill climb. Now, for Toyota enthusiasts, that A90 marking was the dead giveaway. The A40, the A60, 70, and 80 were all Supras. And that meant one thing, the Supra was back. And we all know that it gained a little fame in the Fast and the Furious when it beat that Ferrari. But the new 2020 GR Supra is a fully forward-looking sports car, brimming with new powertrain, chassis, and multimedia technology. The Supra will be fueled by the pinnacle engine from the previous generation, that fourth gen Supra with an inline turbo six. Now this six cylinder engine should produce 335 horsepower and 365 pound feet of torque. It'll be paired with a quick shifting eight speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters. And it's anticipated to go from zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds making it the fastest Toyota production vehicle to date. Now, by defining the targets early in development for performance and handling, Toyota Gazoo Racing in Japan, along with a lot of input from Toyota Motors North America and Toyota Motors Europe, have set out to give this Supra a very unique handling characteristic. Master driver and president of Toyota, Akio Toyota, tested this, as he said, on Nuremberg Ring and many other venues to give his personal feedback as a master driver and ensure that it would exceed the expectations of Toyota enthusiasts across the globe. And let me tell you, after the wait, it was well worth it. Now, when you first take a glance at this Supra, it shares a lot of kinship with the fourth generation Supra built from 93 to 2002. You'll see a lot of the similar characteristics in there, but the more you look at it, you'll see a, a real likeness to the 1967 Toyota 2000 GT. And that likeness is more than just skin deep. 
It shares some really important characteristics like a short wheelbase, a sophisticated chassis, and a powerful inline six cylinder. So now we're gonna take a look at a few of these design and engineering characteristics that are really gonna make it stand out. Now the front of the Supra was inspired heavily by the fourth generation Supra, except this is even more expressive with a big central grill and large air intakes on each side. The rear of the Supra has an integrated rear spoiler which combats aerodynamic lift and pays homage to the tall wing that was available on the fourth gen turbo Supra. The back bumper has a trapezoidal shape, really conveying movement to the wheels. The six lens LED headlights with integrated blinkers and daytime running lights will give the Supra a very unique design. You'll know what's coming at you as it drives down the road. The tail lights have combination light with all lights in the middle in the one unique ring shape. And then there's a big LED reverse light right in the center of the back. Now the cockpit has been inspired by traditional GT styling with ultra modern functionality. It's got a low wide dash area giving the driver a great view out of the front, allowing you to precisely place the vehicle in corners on track days. The easy to read gauge cluster has a multimedia screen to the right, which is gonna place important navigation and audio information there. And there's an available full color heads up display to provide vital driving information right up in front of the driver so he never has to take his eyes off the track. Now the seats are inspired by racing as well. This is an everyday driver, but also an occasional track car. The seats have integrated head restraints a narrow center section and shoulder bolsters to hold the driver and passenger in place when they're really whipping it around the corners. The 3.0 premium grade is going to come with leather heated seats and then the 3.0 grade will come with Alcantara seats that have power functions and memory. There's a luggage compartment that's easily accessed by a lightweight composite hatch. It's going to be perfect for two people to pack for a weekend getaway. It'll also accommodate longer items for those track days. Now let me ask you, is there anything better than a tight handling rear wheel drive sports car? Well, I'm excited about it. I can't wait to get my hands on one. Now moving on, let's talk about that all new 2020 Corolla sedan that Corey mentioned. Since it's in its introduction in 1966, the Corolla has sold over 46 million units globally. Now the small sedan segment's in for a jolt with this one. I've been able to drive one quite a bit lately, and I can tell you the 2020 Corolla sedan is the best Corolla we've ever had. Now we all saw the fully remodeled 2020 Corolla hatch roll out last year, and now we see the best selling model ever, the sedan. The Corolla is designed on the Toyota new global architecture platform, or TNGA. Now that allows Toyota to bring together new philosophies of design, engineering, assembly, and materials. We've got vehicles coming out of Toyota's plants that will have the better performance than last year with higher horsepower numbers, but also achieve higher fuel economy. Not only do we get 40 miles per gallon up to 40 in our sedans, but now our Corolla Hybrid will get up to 52 miles per gallon. And it's also the lowest price point into the entry level of the Toyota Hybrid world. Now you can see from every angle, the new Corolla is lower and leaner, tighter and tauter than ever. It's got aggressive styling lines and great great lines moving down the vehicle to really help you focus on that strong athletic core. This also allows Toyota to deliver on their promise for safety for everyone. With every single Corolla sedan and hatch coming standard with TSS, that's Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. Now the interior of the car hasn't been forgotten about either. It's completely redesigned and it's the most technologically advanced Corolla we've ever had. This comes ready to pair with the driver's digital life. It has standard audio multimedia 3.0 it's gonna come with a six speaker system, Apple CarPlay, Safety Connect, Wi-Fi Connect, and Amazon Alexa capability. So all of those features come standard for the first time ever in our Corollas. If the vehicle were to get into an accident, emergency services can be delivered exactly to the location of the accident through use of a GPS locator. Wi-Fi Connect is gonna be powered by Verizon. You can connect up to five devices to the vehicle at one time. And then we have available remote connect allowing the driver or passengers to pair their car with the vehicle, and they'll be able to start the car or stop it, lock or unlock it, locate it, check the fuel levels from anywhere in the continental United States that you have cell phone service. We also have Service Connect, which will allow the vehicle to send telematics data to the owner or the dealership 
sending them vehicle health reports and reminders when they're due for service. As we can see, this is the most technologically advanced Corolla we have ever had. I want to thank you for your time out here this morning. Be sure to stop by and see the all new 2020 Corolla hybrid we've got. Right behind us, we've got the red hybrid Grab 4, which is all new to the market coming out in the next few weeks. And then we've got everybody's favorite, the brand new 2020 GR Supra, right up here for you to view. Thanks so much for your time, everyone. So one of the cars I was really interested in seeing is the Jeep Gladiator pickup truck. So there's one right over here. Let's go take a look. Whatever you think of Jeeps, the Gladiator is undeniably cool. I mean, who wouldn't want a go anywhere pickup truck and like a real go anywhere pickup truck, like to the moon or something. This thing could handle it and still carry your camping gear. So I had to come back and take a look at the Mazda 3, mainly because I had one and this is a seriously amazing car. I shot some B-roll of it. You might be looking at that B-roll right now. From any angle, this is a stunning small car. It also offers all-wheel drive, which is like unheard of in this segment, unless you're Subaru, of course. But then if you're Subaru, you don't look like that. So the Leaf Plus gets 226 miles on a charge, which you might say you don't care about. You might say you don't care about electric cars, but I disagree. I actually had the first generation Leaf. I leased one for two years here in Atlanta, and while it was not the best looking car in the world, I actually got used to driving it. I'll put a link in the description down below uh, my sort of long-term review of the Leaf, but I liked it a lot more than you might think a car guy would like an electric car. Car. It's a fantastic commuter. Don't underestimate it. Now that it has 226 miles, well, per gallon, miles per charge, miles until you get stranded. Now that it has 226 miles to stranded, it's a lot more relevant than it used to be. So this is the Nissan Kicks they were talking about earlier that's basically converted into one gigantic speaker. I don't think you can buy it that way because that would be impractical. I couldn't show too much earlier because there was a DJ playing copyrighted music and I don't want to get demonetized. So there it is in all of its silent glory, not being DJed. Maybe I'll add some DJ sounding music over the top of this. Ready? Go. Is it just me or does Nissan need to stop trotting out Godzilla at all of its car shows? Godzilla's kind of like that athlete who used to be like really good a long time ago, but now we're all 40 and he's not good at anything anymore and he works at the McDonald's down the street and he's part time at Ace Hardware. I know not everyone's a fan of the new Chevy Silverado, but I like the way the new GMC Sierra looks. I think it's pretty cool looking to be honest with you. If you're in the market for a big pickup truck right now, I have no idea how you would choose between the big three. Sure, it's got a lot of BMW Z4 in it. I don't think there's any denying that. I don't think anybody is going to protect tend to deny that, but the car has presence. There's definitely a look there. Whether or not that look is for you, uh, that's up to you, but I'll say it has presence. It's about all I can say. I'm not entirely sure what this section is, but I like it. It looks cool. I don't know if I would do that to my truck, because then it would be hard to get into. This is the kind of Jeep you see in one of those zombie apocalypse games where it's the last car on Earth and you fight everybody in Fortnite to obtain it. Do you ever wonder what Barbie would drive? Is there any brand that gets overlooked more than Hyundai? I mean, they generally make really nice looking cars. You got the Veloster N over there. Let's head over there in a second. You got the new Elantra. You've got the Palisade SUV, which looks better in person. I thought the Telluride looked better, but to be honest with you, the Palisade, not a bad looking SUV. It's the Telluride's twin, but Hyundai's consistently making really good looking cars. I really like the Veloster N. In fact, I even kind of like it in this baby blue color with the orange accents. I don't know, I think it's nice. And I'll take a hot hatch any day of the week. In fact, the more hot hatches, the better. Hot hatches are the ultimate enthusiast car because they're low power and all about the driving experience. Forget anybody who says high horsepower is better. Hot hatches are where it's at. I would qualify that last statement by saying hot hatches are where it's at if you don't have a high horsepower car. I do have a higher horsepower car, but I still like hot hatches. I mean, I can at least drive the kids around in one. I want to love Acura. I really do. In fact, I like their SUVs. I think the RDX is pretty sweet. 
but why can't they get their act together? Make an awesome sedan. You have the capability. You are Honda. You make that car right there. The NSX is amazing. Stop putting all the money in the RDX. I want to see the TL or TSX or T, whatever you want to call it. Be cool. Come on, Honda Acura, please. Sadly, a lot of the German brands have pulled out of the auto show, but Audi hasn't. And thank God they haven't because they consistently make some of the best looking cars around. Audis are stunning. The Q8 back there looks really good. My only complaint is that it's kind of obvious that it's based on the Bentayga and the Urus and all those other cars, but the Q8 is stunning, as all Audis are. They're just eye candy to be appreciated, and I really like them. So Audi brought the e-tron to the show, and uh, I gotta say, it's a pretty good looking car. In fact, if this is the electric future, if this is what it's going to look like, then I'm okay with that, because I think electric cars in general are pretty cool, and and uh, this one, this one's definitely pretty cool. I wish we could get inside, but unfortunately we can't without getting arrested. The Volkswagen Arteon is kind of interesting because it brings you like 80%, maybe even 85% of Audi's style at a much cheaper price. And when I say much cheaper, I mean slightly cheaper, but too expensive for normal people but it's still sort of a compelling value alternative if you are really into Audi style, or Volkswagen's imitation of Audi style, or reasonably facsimile copy of Audi style. What, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I've been up since like five. All right, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. I'm putting this out there for the world to see. Lincoln is cool again. I declared it, it's official. They might not be the coolest, but they are cool again, or at least cooler than they used to be, which is not saying much, but they are definitely on the right path. This new Lincoln Aviator is so sleek and so sophisticated. I love what they're doing with their styling, especially in the interior. I'm gonna try to grab some shots, but if I can, I'll get some of the Navigator, but you know, Lincoln's interiors are just amazing these days. Sorry, Cadillac, you gotta catch up. What is with this light? Oh my god. Every few years something comes along and claims to challenge the BMW 3 Series. The Genesis G70, made by Hyundai, Hyundai is the latest to do so. And uh, you know what? From this angle, I don't see why not. The Genesis G70 looks great. Apparently it goes pretty fast too. I haven't driven one yet, but Hyundai, I mean Genesis, if you're listening, uh, you know, hook me up. I actually really like the way the new RAV4 looks. In fact, I even think it looks good in this gray color. It looks kind of tough. It looks like a baby forerunner. It doesn't look like an amorphous blob like the last generation. It's got some presence to it. Like it could actually go off road, which it probably can't at all, but it looks like it could maybe possibly on a sunny dry day. So I pretty much came over here for no other reason than these are Alfa Romeos and they look amazing. I saw that dude in blue just did a review on the uh, Julia Quadrifoglio and it looked like a lot of fun and ooh, makes me want one really bad. True petrol heads, if you get the reference, you know what I mean. Last year I had an opportunity to drive the Kia Stinger at Kia's test drive event and it was pretty awesome. They let you get into it pretty hard and thrash a little bit and I have to say it handles pretty well and it drives almost as well as what you'd expect from like a German sports sedan. Not quite but almost and for the money there's not many cars that can beat it. It reminds me a lot of the old Chevy SS, the dearly departed Chevy SS. Moment of silence. I really kind of like the new Kia Soul. I mean, I thought the old one was fine, but the new one looks pretty good, I think. All right, there's a lot of cars that get a lot of attention. One of them that's gotten no attention, I mean, not really, is the Kia K900. And uh, in case you haven't seen it, it's pretty impressive. Here's some shots. Uh, yeah, if you haven't looked at the K900, wow. That is an impressive car. Also, the lighting in the Kia booth. What the heck, Kia? We don't need solar flares above each and every car. You're killing my mojo, Kia. You're killing my shots. Good to see the Future Liner drawing a crowd. I had the privilege of riding in it. That video is linked below. And it was a really cool opportunity. And I'm glad to see that the uh, 
the old beast still is able to draw a crowd in, just like in the old days. I think each year that goes by at the auto show, Caffeine and Octane brings a bigger and bigger selection of Atlanta's coolest cars. I'm gonna B-roll this for a second so you can see all the metal that's on display here. I gave you guys a sneak peek the other day, but it doesn't do it justice. There are so many cool cars here in the Caffeine and Octane section that you just have to see it. And it really adds a little something extra to the auto show, so take a look. Well guys, that'll about do it for the auto show for this year. I'm heading out. I'm a little sad because I'm always sad when the auto show is over. There's just too much to see. There's just too much to do to take it all in in one session. Um, I have the opportunity to come back this weekend. Maybe I will, but that's probably it for the filming. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of look behind the scenes at one of America's best auto shows as LA, New York, and Detroit have kind of declined. Atlanta has sort of risen to prominence and become even more important to the industry. Uh, in fact, some people say that the Atlanta show yields more sales for the brands involved than some of the other bigger shows, which are more about debuting new models. So I hope you like this video. If you did, please hit like, subscribe if you like more of this content. And until next time, ride safe, drive safe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. There's this light outside. It's like some form of bright yellow radiation that I am unfamiliar with because it's been so long. Oh, I'm just kidding. It's nice to have good weather for once.